Have one and welcome to the Blue Monday Manchester City podcast. A warm welcome to every single one of you who is joining me. Today, again, it's not on a Monday. That's because I'm going on holiday. It's International Week. So why not go and enjoy a little bit of the sun abroad? And that is exactly what I am planning on doing. Now, on this week's podcast, I'm going to be talking about the Bournemouth game transfers as per usual. And I'm going to be adding a new feature, which hopefully we won't have to do too often. It's called Ref's Watch. Now, it's been inspired by some of the refereeing performances over the last couple of seasons, and we have plenty to talk about in that segment. On top of that, we'll also be previewing a little bit of the international fixtures, not that it matters all too much at all. But, let's talk about the Bournemouth game. So, starting lineup, I said the other day that I wouldn't be surprised if City moved again into the five of the back formation, and I was wrong, pleasantly surprised. I asked us to go to a four at the back, and Guardiola listened. Thanks for that, Pep. You can just uh, fax me any sort of information you want to get. Job offers as well. I'm willingly take on the assistant manager role. I'll even play up front, mate. Just send me anything. I'll help you out any time. But the four at the back seem to work a lot, lot better this week, I have to say. It helped us bombing on down the wings, especially against teams where you have the majority of the possession. And as it also saw a start as well for Benjamin Mendy, him making his Manchester City debut. Plenty of positives. But at the start of the game, City started off very, very slowly. Uh, I don't really know why that passing was completely off, and it seems to have happened so far in every game we've played this season. Slow against Brighton, slow against Everton, and they scored. And again, slow this week against Bournemouth, I should say, and they scored again. But the goal was a fantastic strike, I have to say. Um, It was always going to happen because I had Charlie Daniels in my fantasy league team. So the only team we would have scored against all year would have been against City, which is just completely just rubbing the salt into the wounds. It's a hell of a finish. The only criticism I have to say about the City defence for that one is Danilo. I think he really could have done a bit better there to really come and close him down. He just lets him have the shot. He just ducks out the way almost as well with that goal. I think he could have done a lot better. But as soon as that goal went in, it seemed like a bit of a wake-up call for City, especially in the first half. I thought Bernardo Silva's inclusion was fantastic. I agree with dropping Aguero because the front two weren't working together. And I think that Aguero missed a lot of chances on Monday, which he should have scored. And until he starts hitting form, bench him. As well as Gabriel Jesus, he wasn't great on Monday night. Again, I think he did okay today. And in the end of the day, he actually won man of the match. But he did look positive in the first 20 minutes. And then eventually it came true. A fantastic finish from him. Great ball from David Silva. I mean, the guy is a magician. I put on my Twitter earlier. That's the reason why he is the best player to have ever played for Manchester City. And I believe he is. He's just absolutely fantastic going forward. The way he picks his passes out is just sensational. And he gets yet another assist. David Silva really should perhaps be called the postman because he always seems to deliver. How may I assist you? That's one of the worst memes ever. But still, a great piece of play there from David Silva. Perfectly weighted. An almost scuffish finish in the corner as well from Gabriel Jesus, but a decent finish nonetheless. And it helped us get one all. And at that point, you're thinking, well, let's just see how the game goes on. Let the goals roll in because we were hammering them. Absolutely hammering them. Loads and loads of chances. But again, we weren't clinical. We seemed to get in a lot of good positions. One of the best examples, I think, was Bernardo Silva's chance. He's through in the middle of the goal. He's got options to his right in uh, Silva. And he's got on his left-hand side, Gabriel Jesus. And fair enough, you can use them as decoys as long as you get your shot in on target and get a goal. He hits it straight at the keeper. And it just simply wasn't a good enough strike. And then at half-time, Bournemouth, they were, they were happy. I heard a lot of their fans whistling at half-time, willing for that whistle to go. And then eventually it did, and they were absolutely delighted. It was a big cheer from their fans at half-time. Coming out second half, they came out fighting again. And City once again took their foot off the gas a little bit. And they allowed them to get back into the game a bit. Josh King hit the post with a lovely strike. And then again, we also hit the post as well with Nicholas Otamendi. But the decision-making for some of the substitutions, in my opinion, were slightly wrong. I think Sané should have come on a lot earlier. I think Bernardo had a good game, but fair enough, take him off, because I think he has worked hard in that fixture, didn't stop running. That's fair enough. But it did surprise me that Sterling stayed on for so long. In the end, it did work out, of course, because he got the goal. But I was thinking, well, just get Yaya on. 
get Yaya on. And the decision to take off Gabriel Jesus for me was slightly strange, especially when you have another goal scorer on the pitch. And this, for me, is why City need another striker. So many times the ball was played into Benjamin Mendy down that left-hand side, and he was putting in sensational balls into the box. He nearly set up Gabriel Jesus for a goal in the first half. And then in the second half, he was pinging balls in every time, low and high in the air as well. And if City had a big man, which I've been calling out for the last three podcasts, whether it's someone like Lorente or somebody else, I still think that City need a big, strong, commanding presence of a forward in the box. Today, I was watching United's game. It gives them another dimension. You can play the ball into Lukaku. Balls bounce off him. Teams aren't able to wrestle him off the ball. It creates chances all day long. And again, Lukaku wins headers in the air. City, for me, were all tiny. Apart from Torre, I can't see us scoring many goals in the opposing box from headers. We're such a small side. It really does scare me at times, especially when we play against big teams. And towards the end of the game, I thought Benjamin Mendy had a really good performance as well during the fixture. Again, the Nando's Banter King was top draw, but he was putting in good balls into the box, and I think we just needed a big man to get on the end of them. But luckily, in the end, we showed a little bit of resilience. That old spirit of Mancini coming back again, and City fighting on till the end of the game is a horrible motto, but City did it in this performance. And the minutes added on, There was initially five minutes of minimum added time. Once again, that's minimum added time. I've seen lots of football fans playing on Twitter. Well, we've played into the 100th minute of this game. That's because it's called the minimum added time. There was a bit of a fracker on the side of the pitch between Guardiola and Eddie Howe. That took about 30, 45 seconds. On top of that, we saw Benica Fobi go down. That took over a minute, two minutes as well. Then there was a substitution. That's another 30 seconds. It all adds up. And then when it came to it, City attacked down the opposite end, Bournemouth switched off, they were a little bit frustrated, felt they should have had a foul, it wasn't particularly a foul for me, went up the other end, nice ball out wide, nice touch inside by Sterling, we get a lot of luck and the ball ends up in the back of the net, fantastic result, limbs everywhere. Fantastic to see. City fans on the pitch. That's what football is all about. Fantastic to see. And then it has to be ruined by overzealous stewarding and police officers. Whilst I understand it is their job, at times you have to allow people to have a little bit of fun. And City players and fans were loving it. Now, one person in particular who was seemingly loving it a little bit too much was Raheem Sterling, because shortly after, he was given a second yellow card and given his marching orders by Mike Dean for having too much fun. It's almost been like school again. Oh, he's a little bit too hyper. He's having too much fun. Put him in the corner, take him outside the classroom. That's what it was almost like with the situation where he was sent off. Whilst I understand it's a law that you are not allowed to approach the fans and not allowed to go into the fans, I have to say that I don't think Raheem Sterling, in fact, even left the pitch. The fans were already on that pitch by that point as well. I mean, it's almost like, as Pep Guardiola says, what do you want in the future to be no fans at football games? It's almost coming to this point where it's just absolutely ridiculous. I can understand if he had his shirt whipped off, but if you're celebrating... What's he meant to do? Just like clap his hands and go, yes, get in and go back to the halfway line. It's a 96th minute away win in front of 500 travelling fans all the way down to Bournemouth. Enjoy yourselves. Mike Dean, the fun police. Now, the problem with Mike Dean, and I say it time and time again with him, he always likes to be the main man of attention. He likes to have the news stories around him. He likes his performance. He's an ultra egoist. He's so arrogant. It's beyond ridiculous how much this guy loves to control football matches. And the strange thing is that considering he's so card happy, some of the decisions in the game were absolutely atrocious. The first one, Nathan Aki. He goes to kick the ball, he's tackled, he swings a leg, last man, and Gabriel Jesus is through on goal. Now, if that isn't preventing a goal-scoring opportunity, I don't know what is. Yet, Mike Dean decides to reach for a yellow card. Second half, another interesting decision. Steve Cook goes right through Gabriel Jesus. Yes, he gets the ball, but it's a malicious and dangerous challenge, and it was perhaps reckless, which could be a red card. Yet, Not even a yellow card. And then minutes later, Steve Cook goes and sticks his leg in the air, boots Gabriel Jesus in the face and gets a yellow card. Could it have been his second yellow? It quite possibly could have been. Things change all the time in football. And also, in the first half, a lot of people have seemed to have pointed this out a little bit, is that Charlie Daniels, when he scored, he leapt over the advertising hoardings. He made an approach towards the home fans. Was he booked? 
No, he wasn't. It just seems absolutely ridiculous, Mike Dean's decision to send off Sterling. And the frustrating part about it isn't the fact that he sent off in that game. It's the fact that he's missing against Liverpool. And it's a really big fixture. A top side like Liverpool. He's been in good form. Scored two goals in the last couple of games as well. It would have been lovely to have him in that fixture, especially against the tricky Reds. And it would have been nice to see how well he performed against his old side. And because of the ridiculousness of the system, you can't appeal a yellow card. So he, it cannot be overturned. So he has to miss the next game. Game, despite the ridiculous not ridiculousness of it all on refs watch I'll probably give Mike Dean a 1 out of 10 he really didn't do well the only thing I have to praise him is the fact that he did actually go on and stick on the board for five minutes and allow City to help get on towards the end of the game and score the winning goal but still Overall, in terms of the performance for City, again, it should have been a game where we finished them off a lot earlier. Not clinical enough once again. I think we're still missing a defensive midfielder at times. Someone, I mean, it's a little bit strange at City because we've got so many attacking players. But if we took the lead 1-0 in that game, I really couldn't see City holding on to the lead. I feel like that's going to happen plenty of times this season. We don't have enough defensive players in the squad. Yes, Delph was back on the bench today. But is he good enough? I don't know. I still think we need a striker, as I've said and a defensive midfielder and that would help City complete the lineup. That's my personal beliefs anyway. But one thing which I have noticed after the game is that in terms of statistics, that is Pep Guardiola's 14th away win out of 21 games. And that is a very, very impressive record, I have to say. You know, he has changed City's away form around a lot because when under Mancini and under Pellegrini, it was City... Losing points away from home was one of our main problems. But I have to say, away from home, City are looking a lot, lot better than a few seasons ago. It's almost like it's swapped over, because at home, we're struggling a lot, lot more. Now, one thing which has come out after the game as well, apart from a few of other Pep Guardiola's uh, comments as well, which have been slightly interesting in a press conference, if you haven't seen that, go ahead and watch that as well. Very interesting. There has been a comment made about Sergio Aguero by one of the stewards, and he's basically claimed that he's hit him. And when you check out the footage of it, he's not touched him at all. This guy was an overzealous steward by the looks of things. He's grappling a City fan on the floor, almost performing a citizen's arrest, despite the fact that he has no right to. It is the job of the police to arrest people. He's almost trying to arrest this guy on the pitch for having a little bit too much fun and celebrating goal in the 95th minute. Obviously, this guy didn't get the memo that you're allowed to have fun at football games. Now, Sergio Aguero has put on Twitter that he has not touched him, the footage is complete rubbish, and that City have basically said as well that they're reviewing the incident, which means that nothing has really happened at all. But if Sergio Aguero gets done for it, I think that would be a complete joke, and that basically you should just say that, well, you should have no humanity in the world instead of trying to help another human being. At the end of the day, the way I see the situation is the fact that Sergio Aguero is showing a little bit of compassion towards one of the football fans. Because people always say, oh, footballers, they don't care about fans at all. He did actually show quite a lot of compassion in that incident. So it's always quite nice to see that he's caring about football fans, unlike some of the police forces and the stewards up and down the country. So, at the end of the day, it was a good three points. It helps us out towards our league total, and especially needed after United's two-goal win against Leicester, again, where they've looked pretty decent, United, in that fixture. So it's a really tough game after the international break. A fixture against Liverpool. We'll have to see who's about... I suspect that City will have quite a few injuries to deal with after the international break. Seems to happen every single time. Always frustrating. We'll have to see how that ends up going. England are playing Malta and also Slovenia, I believe. Malta on Friday and Slovenia on the Monday. Raheem Sterling, I think, has been called up, as well as John Stones. Uh, there's probably someone else from the City team. Kyle Walker, as well, I think, has been included. Quite a few of the City young lads have been picked. I think uh, Phil Foden's been picked for the under-20s, under-19s team, as well as quite a lot of other City players, of course. Someone like Benjamin Mendy has been called up for France, despite only playing one game for City. But still, let's just hope no injuries after the international break, and I will be a very happy bunny indeed. In terms of transfers, Wilfred Boney seems to have agreed terms with Swansea City, but he's still training at City, so it doesn't really seem like that's happening anytime soon. So we'll have to hope that he leaves 
leaves very, very soon. Nothing against the guy, just think he'll do well at another club. Still seems like Fabian Delft's included in the City team. Is it just to make up numbers as a homegrown player? I'm not really too sure about that one. In terms of people coming into the club, it looks like the Sanchez story is dead and buried. Mbappe is never going to happen. I still think we need a big man. You're going to keep hearing it, ladies and gentlemen, until the transfer window closes in five days' time. I still think City desperately need a big striker. Please let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the comments from this video down in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you once again. I'll read a virtue.